Father, full of love and grace, we thank you for watching over us this past week and for leading our footsteps into your house. Y por guiar pisadas a tu casa en este hermoso y bendecido día. May día. this time of worship be a worship that is truly pleasing to your que eyes que and help us to leave behind all of our worries and concerns of this world so that we may be able to fully concentrate on you and the word you have prepared for us today. Please open up our hearts favor, and bestow upon us wisdom from heaven so that we can understand cielo, these words para que and obey these words palabras, and live by them. Palabras. Father, the world is Padre, trying so hard to separate us from you. De but we ask that you help pero us te to be que separated from this world a and be united with you. Este mundo y a estar unidos help us to have faith Ayúdanos like the sea of glass so that, that we can walk with you every day with joy and gratitude despite our circumstances. Help us to withstand all trials, temptations, and suffering. And please be with every member who is here today and all those who are not able to make it and those who are worshiping with us Internet. You know all of their Tú prayer todas sus Please Por listen favor, to the cries of their escucha hearts el clamor de and sus answer each and every one of them and, and help them to know and experience the work and goodness el of our living God, God who is our Father, vivo, who works all Padre, things out for our good, for those who love you. Nos ama. We thank you so damos much for this time of worship. Por este tiempo, May it be a time que sea where un only you are glorified. Solo tú and please don't let any darkness come into this hour. But may the lugar, fiery walls of the Holy Spirit de fuego del protect each and every one of us today and always. Hoy, we siempre. thank you again and for all this gracias. in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Señor Christ. Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Today's word of life comes from Exodus chapter 25, verse 8 and 9. Exodus chapter 25, verse 8 and 9. I will read. Exodus chapter 25, verses 8 and 9. Let them construct a sanctuary for me, that I may dwell among them according to all that I am going to show you, as the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furniture, just so you shall construct it. This is the word of God. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Buenas tardes a todos. Nice and cozy in here today. Es buen, bien, I like it because I can see bien, everybody bien, and there's not that much room. Bien aquí, um, but welcome to Bienvenidos the 16th lecture of the History of Redemption Academy. Academy de la de la we are now studying the ninth el book libro of the History of Redemption. De la historia de la redención. And the Ninth book is entitled el The Mystery de la of the Wondrous Glory, el The Tabernacle y el and the Ark of the Pacto. Covenant. So just like Así the name, it focuses on every aspect of the tabernacle and the Ark of the Covenant. But today, we will just be studying the exterior layout of the tabernacle. So what is the tabernacle? In Hebrew, the word is mishkan, and it means a dwelling place. And that means to dwell somewhere or to reside there. So back then, this tabernacle was a mobile tent and sanctuary. So all throughout the wilderness journey, they had to carry it, they had to assemble it, and then each tribe camped around the tabernacle when they were at the camp. So it was always at the center. And then when they had to move, they had to disassemble it and then take it to the next campsite. So they continuously did this all throughout the wilderness journey. And today's main scripture is God instructing Moses to build the tabernacle, which was on his fourth ascent of Mount Sinai. And this was about 50 days after the Exodus. So up until this point, Moses had to climb up and down, up and down Mount Sinai so that he can speak with 
God. Para hablar con But Dios. now, the Pero tabernacle, con el, con el tabernáculo, God is saying, Dios les está build this tabernacle, and I will come down, and that is where I will meet with you. That's, where I, that's where, where, I where I will speak to you. That's where I will be with you. And so think about that Así for one second. En eso por un momento. Ever since Desde the fall la caída of Adam, We have been Hemos separated from God. De Dios Why? Pecado, Because of sin. Se sin separates el us from nos God. Nos separa de Dios. But here now at Mount Sinai, ahora, Sinai, Sinai, God is telling dice, us, le, I want to be with you again. But in order for this to happen, we suceda, need to build the tabernacle, his dwelling place. Morada. And how do we do that? In verse 9 bueno, of today's text, text, it says, dice, according to all that I am going to show you, mostrar, God gives very detailed instructions so that we can build this tabernacle, this tabernacle exactly how he wants it. Remember, this is his Recuerden, house. Este we got to build it to his preference. Es, es dice, so we just need to follow this pattern that he gives us. And in the New Testament, Paul Pablo says that we, dice que our bodies, are the temple of the Holy templo Spirit. Del Espíritu Santo. So in learning Entonces, the instructions that, and the pattern that God gave to que Dios Moses, Moses para it's teaching el, us el how to build esto nos está our cómo temple, God's dwelling place la in de Dios us. En so all of Así us, no we as followers of Christ, Christ, we are all temple builders. That is why templos. it's so important for us to study this. So Let's examine Entonces, how God instructed Moses to build the exterior of the tabernacle. And I just want to let you all know, this is a very broad overview. Because if we went through all the details, we would be here probably until si next month. Uh, but so we're going to do a very broad overview. But if you would like to learn more, the ninth amplio, book is available si right now only in Korean. Libro, but they are working on the English translation. Right. So this o sea, is the overview entonces, of the tabernacle. Es tabernacle. So if you see, the si entirety of the tabernacle is enclosed by a white fence. This is the enclosure. And you can see that Aquí there is only one entrance gate. Solo hay una and when you enter in, entran, that whole area is the courtyard. Area es el and atrio. in the courtyard, y we see atrio, the altar of burnt offering. El altar del and we see the laver. And la, right behind la, the laver la, is la the tent puente, of meeting. Y luego vemos and in the tent of meeting, there is the holy place where the priests and the high priest can enter. But behind the holy place, which separates by a veil, is the Holy of Holies, and this Santísimo. is where the Ark of Covenant, the presence of God, is. So this is only where the high priest can enter once a year on the Day of Atonement. So this is the overview of the tabernacle, but we're going to be studying the exterior. So first, we have the enclosure. This is the fence with the linen hanging around the courts. So God told them to put a fence all around, and that makes the court of the tabernacle, and it contains everything within it. And he gave exact dimensions, 100 cubits by 50 cubits. And the fence that is all around is made of linen hanging. And these linens were white. White is the symbol of purity, holiness, and perfect separation. Therefore, once the linen hangs, hangings went up, it became sanctified and consecrated ground, holy and set apart from all other grounds around it. And what does Revelation 19.8 tell us? It tells us that fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. But are we righteous? No. No. Therefore, Por we tanto, ourselves don't produce any righteousness. No This justicia, righteousness comes from Jesus. He Jesus. wraps us Él nos in his righteousness and he deems us righteous. Y nos tiene por justos. So when we believe in Así Jesus que, Christ que, and we accept him as our Lord and our Savior, Salvador, is when the linen hangings es, are now around us and we are now alrededor. the righteous Ahora saints. Somos los santos justos. 
And so these linens Entonces, were estas, hanging on estas cortinas pillars. de lino estaban and these colgadas pillars de columnas. Were made Estas columnas of eran hechas wood. de madera de acacia. So acacia trees are very Los árboles de acacia son muy encontrados, se encuentran en el desierto, twisted, son torcidos, and had many eh, knots, like you see son here. Um, deformados, like tienen muchos nudos y crecen así it's porque es like un área seca. No es como un árbol que está cerca del mar, que crece majestic. algo frondoso, grande, like majestuoso. No, es así como lo ven acá. But God wanted to use this tree specifically este for his tabernacle. And this was a tree that people este saw un árbol, as useless. Un árbol que la gente look at it, what good no can come out of nada, this? Decían, bueno But the acacia wood symbolizes the humanity of Jesus la Christ. In Isaiah 53, verse 2, it says, For he grew up before him like a tender shoot como, como, and like a root out of parched ground. Seca, he has no state form or majesty that we We should look upon him, majestad, nor appearance that we should be attracted desearle. to him. So what does this tell us? Que nos está Jesus esto, que was Jesús unsightly. Era, he era was not good looking at era all. Para nada. But God took on no flesh and came to this hizo world carne y vino for este one mundo, purpose. Por un he had to come as man tenía que to bring salvation para traer to the cross. But these pillars Pero represent humanity. That's humanidad. you and me. Eso somos usted y yo. We are unsightly Usted beings. Yo We somos are the twisted, somos the ese warped, de acacia, and the knotted lleno de, de nudos. Nosotros somos just like the acacia wood. Así como so imagine de what Entonces, that acacia wood has to go through lo que esa to de acacia tiene que pasar a para poder ser una columna. But that's what God is doing Pero eso to es lo us que Dios right nos now. Está en este If we're having momento, hardships and suffering in our life, God is turning you into Dios a nos está for his en una columna para su temple. We must overcome Tenemos these hardships and remain faithful until the end. Why? Revelation verse 3, verse 12, 3, 12 he who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he will not go out from it anymore. And I will write on him the name of my God. Dios, and the name of the city of my God, Dios, la nueva Jerusalén, New Jerusalem, que desciende del cielo de mi Dios y mi nombre God nuevo, el que tiene oído Olga, lo que el Espíritu desea a la iglesia. So, Entonces, I hope and pray that you oro y espero que usted y yo podamos perseverar y entrar a través de su entrenamiento y que nos podamos convertir de madera de acacia a sus columnas para que seamos las columnas que él toma en cuenta en su morada. And then third, we tercero, have the bronze socket. The bronze socket las was the base of the pillar. Era la so that it's what's holding the pillar in place in the ground. It's partially above and below the ground. And it was a foundation support of the pillar. And this socket was made of bronze. Bronze is fire resistant. So this foreshadows the suffering of Jesus as he endured the fiery trials and death for our y la muerte por nuestro pecado. Furthermore, this más, teaches us that we individually and as a church must be founded upon the sacrifice de of our Señor. Lord. As Como pillars, columnas, we stand upon nos apoyamos his death, en su muerte, his righteousness, y su and his salvation. And so we too must nosotros become también like debemos volvernos bronze, como el bronce, resistentes al fuego. Through every fiery trial a través de cada prueba y tribulación de fuego que atravesamos, debemos like emerger como el bronce y lesos del fuego mediante una fe duradera y perseverancia en Cristo. Revelation 14, Apocalipsis 14, 12 dice, aquí está la perseverancia de los santos que guardan los mandamientos de Dios y la fe de Jesús. So our faith in Así que Jesus and in his Jesús word is palabra. our perseverance. Es nuestra perseverancia. Next we have the Luego cord tenemos los and the pegs. Y las I don't know if see that here, but the cords and the pegs, estas estacas the pegs aquí, are what's on the ground, and van then it's the string tierra. that comes up to the pillar, to the peg is the cord. 
So once the bronze Desde eso, una vez are placed, colocada las bases de bronce se colocan las columnas hung, y se cuelgan las cortinas de lino. Luego finalmente se clavan esas estacas en el suelo y se atan las cuerdas a las so estacas like y a las columnas. Es como cuando usted está levantando una, una carpa so para acampar. Usted o sea, tiene que poner esos clavos en la so tierra para que sostengan la, la, so la carpa. Y es como este, esta cerca puede resistir los vientos que son plan en la naturaleza. Y este and pequeño peg, clavo, esta pequeña estaca, no es pequeñito really sin valor. Nadie en realidad como que But nota. Peg, pero sin ese, sin eso, todo el, toda la estructura so se cae al suelo. Esos, esas estacas, esos clavos son los and que están sosteniendo todo el tabernáculo. Y este pequeño objeto es la fuente de estructura y de soporte del tabernáculo. Y sabemos nosotros también que solamente hay un fundamento y el único fundamento es Jesucristo. Isaías 28, 16 dice, por lo tanto, dice el Señor, o sea, aquí pongo por fundamento en una piedra, una piedra probada, angular, preciosa, fundamental, bien colocada. El que crea en ella no será perturbado. So Jesus came Así que Jesús as an vino insignificant carpenter como un carpintero insignificante de Nazaret, pero Él es nuestro faith, fundamento de fe, salvación y vida. And life. And then the cords, y luego, the cords are the cords of love, las, and las, the cords los cordones, of the esos son las cuerdas, las cuerdas de amor y del pacto church, que nos conectan a nosotros, Christ, la iglesia, con Cristo, nuestro fundamento. Hosea 11, verse 4, o sea, 11, 4 dice, them con with cuerdas cords humanas of man, te conduje, lazos de amor, and y fui para ellos como quien alza el yugo de sobre sus quijadas, me incliné y les di de comer. Sorry, fed them. So the covenant Así que el pacto is es la expresión del amor love. de Dios. Él no necesita hacer estos pactos con nosotros, pero lo hace a través de su amor. Y él no tiene que ser fiel con nosotros, pero lo es porque él nos ama. So Así que, him, aunque nosotros le fallemos, él nunca nos fallará a nosotros. Then we have the Luego tenemos los ganchos y las bandas de plata. So if you look si here, the silver aquí, hooks are las, on the stem of the pillar, las and these de plata, the linen hanging to the pillar, and then the silver bands are at the top of the pillar. So these connect the pillars y en la parte de arriba están las bandas de plata, y estas conectan las columnas la una con so la otra. Así que estas son los conectores de plata que conectan las cortinas con los con los uh, columnas y las columnas en una en otra. Aquí and it can palabra, also mean money in those days. Plata in ancient hebreo, es que times, silver actually was the currency. And it días. was especially used as their atonement money, which was supposed to be paid by every Israelite as remembrance and ransom payment for their lives, which God redeemed from Egypt. 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 In Exodus 30, verse 16, it says, You shall take the atonement money from the sons of Israel and shall give it for the service of the tent of meeting, that it may be a memorial for the sons of Israel before the Lord to make atonement for yourselves. So, in this verse, when talking about the ransom payment and the money, the word kaseth is used. So this ransom payment back in the Old Testament was paid silver. But in the New Testament, that ransom payment was paid by Jesus' blood on the cross. He atoned for us, he paid the price, and he redeemed us. So this silver symbolizes the atoning, death, and sacrifice that Jesus paid for our sin. Matthew 20, verse 28, 20, 28, just as the Son of Man did not no come para to be served, but to para servir, and to para give su vida his life a ransom for many. So you see, Como pueden ver, the foundation el is Jesus. Jesus. The linen las hanging de is Jesus' righteousness that's given Jesús to us. Ha dado. The support and the strength of the pillars is Jesus. The cord is the love and covenant of God, Dios, which is fulfilled through Jesus. Que se a de Jesús. The connectors los connectores is Jesus' es rescate de Jesús por nosotros. So Jesus is everywhere pues Jesús in the enclosure. En el exterior y en el, and if we are within that enclosure, we are within his protection, his guidance, and his safety. Eh, so no matter seguros, what we're going through, no que if we're within this enclosure, si nothing ahí can affect us. Este, 
And now secondly, Entonces, we're going to look at the holy objects that are in the court of the tabernacle. There tabernacle. are two objects in the Hay court. The tent of the meeting la is a structure, which we will be studying later on in this book. Uh, but today we're going to look at the two holy Hoy vamos objects. A ver los dos the que first están en el atrio. is Primero the altar of es el burnt altar offering. Del this is the first thing that you see when you enter the court of the tabernacle. And this is made of also a también de madera and that's why it's fire resistant so the, the fact that there is an Entonces, altar of burnt offering as soon as you enter the door indicates that in order to meet God que para poder you must first Dios, resolve the problem of sin we cannot come before no God if sin is still present Dios, and separating si us. So nosotros, we must first no offer a prayer of repentance, repentance to but the most Pero important characteristic la is that the fire in the altar es que was kept burning at se all times. Todo Not just when they no had an offering, it was ofrenda, burning perpetually. And this was one of the main es duties of the priest to keep it burning. Why? Because it needed to be ready at all hours of the day to give up offering of any sacrifice whenever it came through. And so for us to Today, Así que para this fire hoy, has este to be on at all times in the church. This is the altar of fire este es that burns away our lo, sins. This is the fire of Jesus' este atoning de la, sacrifice de la, that must be kept on at all times. Nosotros, que tiene que estar en todo and the tiempo. fact that it's always burning means that the path to atonement is always open to sinners. It shows that the work of atonement through Jesus Christ has never be stopped. And how great a blessing Qué bendición tan grande es esa, ¿verdad? Si hemos cometido un error, solo tenemos que clamar el nombre del Señor y arrepentirnos y seremos perdonados. So let's look at the redemptive historical meaning of the altar of burnt offering. First, Primero, the continually burning fire on the altar is symbolic es of the unquenchable power del, of Christ's gospel del to consume all human in, sins. And second, the numerous Segundo, sacrifices offered on the altar foreshadow the, the one and only sacrifice of death offered by Jesus Christ. Christ, which atoned for all sins los de la of mankind all times. Tiempos. So in the Old Testament, Entonces, the Testament, Israelites had to offer numerous sacrifices, yet their sins were only atoned for temporarily. Por lo que so que they had to continuously burn at all times. En el altar por sus but Jesus Pero took care of our sins once and for all when he died on the cross. Third, the four horns on the four corners of the altar are symbolic of the power of the gospel that will be spread to the four corners of the earth. In the Bible, you'll come across horns. And la, horns symbolize power. En la Biblia, en contraste, and what los animal has horns? We think of bulls, tiene right? Bulls los toros, los are symbols son of power, power and strength. So the four Entonces, horns on the four corners en las of the altar symbolize, del, symbolize the power del, of the gospel, the gospel that will spread to the whole world. Por todo el mundo you and I already know just how powerful the gospel is. Que es el el is. Now the rest of the world Pronto will el too. Mundo entero también lo hará. Fourth, Cuarto, the purple cloth that covers the altar, que altar when being moved symbolizes the kingship of Christ. El, el, Remember, the tabernacle was a mobile Cristo. sanctuary, so they had to disassemble Recuerde, it, and then they had to move it to the next camp. And when they did so, they laid a purple cloth over una, the altar, which symbolizes the kingship of Christ. El reino de In the ancient times, en el purple was only worn by royalty, purpura, by kings. But what's even more Pero profound about this kingship of Christ de de is that his kingship is symbolized su, by his suffering. Su reino the altar of burnt offering symbolizes suffering because el Jesus del was our atonement sacrifice. Él fue he was the one who was burnt instead of us on that flame. Murió y fue he became en king por nosotros. through his suffering. 
And the second object in the court is the laver or the water basin. So it was a round vessel that was made of bronze, again, which the priests used to wash their hands and feet. And it was located between the altar of burnt offering and the tent of meeting. So let's look at the redemptive historical meaning of the labor. First, water symbolizes the cleansing and sanctifying power of the word of God. We look at Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26, it says, so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word. See, the water in the labor is the word of God that cleanses and sanctifies us. Now there is sins have been atoned for, the suffering of our Lord, which is seen through the altar of burnt offering, we must now wash our hands and feet with the word of God every day. Just because we've already received forgiveness doesn't mean that we're not prone to make mistakes. We all know that we are imperfect and we sin. Sometimes every single day, sometimes more often than we like. No, más a menudo lo que deseáramos. Por eso debemos ser lavados diariamente por el poder del santificador de su palabra. Piénselo. El siguiente paso después de la, después de, de la fuente es la tienda de reunión. Tenemos que estar completamente limpios antes de entrar a la tienda de reunión, que es donde está la presencia de Dios. Second, Segundo, the water el agua symbolizes the repentance el arrepentimiento de los santos que han recibido la gracia expiatoria de Jesucristo. Christ. Even though all of our sins have been forgiven through the blood of Christ, the saint must daily look into his heart el santo debe mirar diariamente dentro de su corazón y mirar el espejo de la palabra. In ancient times, they actually used bronze to make mirrors. They polished it super thin so that they could see their reflection, and this was their mirror. En ese, so this labor bronce, and the water in the labor both showed their reflection. Fuente, God's word is our mirror that shows us our imperfections and shows just how far we are from his image lo, lo, co, and que, what this que does tan lejos is lead imagen. us to repentance. Y eso nos lleva John 13, 10, Juan 13, 10, says Jesus said to him, he el que who has bathed no needs only to wash his feet, pies, but is completely pues clean, limpio, and you are clean, limpios, but not all of you. So what is Jesus saying here? He's saying Jesus. that we have been bathed clean, our whole body, by his blood. But when we go out into the world and we live our lives, our feet are dirty. We make mistakes and we sin. So when we get home, we have to wash our feet. And we do this through his word, prayer, and repentance. Third, the water symbolizes the cleansing of the heart. Third, the water symbolizes the cleansing of the heart. Third, the water symbolizes the cleansing of the heart. Third, the water symbolizes the cleansing of the heart. Third, the water symbolizes the cleansing of the heart. Baptism, Nuestro which bautismo, unites us que nos with the death con la and resurrection of Christ. De We've been studying a Hemos lot about baptism, sobre el baptism these last few weeks semanas. during these lectures. But el what's important is that baptism is es necessary for our life of faith de fe, because it porque signifies our union with Christ. His death and resurrection which yields a nosotros mismos a reborn soul en whose identity is now in Christ. So in order to enter God's presence, we must be baptized. Entonces, so the conclusion entonces, la is that the exterior es que el exterior of the tabernacle teaches us que that we must build our temples upon Jesus Christ and his gospel, which leads us to repentance and renewal by the washing of his word and prayer to live a life of holiness. God's will for our life is our holiness. All the instructions that God gave to Moses regarding the exterior of the tabernacle point to Jesus and his great work of salvation, salvation and redemption. And it shows us that we must lead a right spiritual life of holiness. How? Solo By remembering the great mercy and love of Jesus that saved us and washing ourselves eso, daily through his word and prayer so that we can be transformed and take on the likeness of the holiness of God. Ser, la, la it's not going to be easy. No va a ser fácil. God is going to stretch you. Dios. He's going to lengthen you. He's going to 
adjust you and he's going to get rid of all the knots that are in you. But all of this is so that he can Pero make us tall, straight, pillars and wrap up and if we remain faithful and endure in the midst of this lengthening, this discipline, this training, we will bear fruit of holiness. And do you know what God promises to those who pursue and achieve holiness? Romans 6 verse 22 says, But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit of holiness and the end of everlasting life. This is the secret to eternal life este es el with God. Para la vida eterna con Dios. Isn't that why you and I are here today? No es eso la razón por la cual so I hope and pray that as we continue to study about the tabernacle and the Ark of the Covenant, el del pacto, may we have the heart el to follow the instructions and the pattern of the tabernacle, tabernacle so that we can build Dios the temple within ourselves para que podamos according el to every dimension, every material, material, so that we can prepare His dwelling place in us. Amen. Eterna en nosotros. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Oremos. Heavenly Father, Padre Celestial, our one and only true tabernacle, nuestro único tabernacle we thank you for teaching us about how we need to build your dwelling place in us. Help us, Lord, to be able to follow your instructions and pattern every day so we can continue to build your holy and consecrated temple in each and every one of us so that you might dwell in us forever. Father, we are the acacia wood that is warped, twisted, and filled with knots. But we now know that you are taking that and adjusting us and strengthening us so that we can become durable foundations in your temple. Help us to have the heart to immerse ourselves in your word and through prayer and repentance may we come fully cleansed from this world, drawing near to you every day. And even though we may be walking on the path of suffering right now, help us never to lose sight of you, but to cling on to you even tighter so we can live a life like our Lord Jesus, who is the perfect example of holiness and obedience. And at this time, for all the grace that you have poured upon us, our families, and our church, we give to you but a small fraction of what you have given to us. We give you this offering with a cheerful and grateful heart. May this be used for your kingdom and for your works and purpose. And please bless all the hands that give and bless them and their families abundantly. We give you all honor, glory, and thanksgiving. And we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's give God the glory.